Hey friends, you've got no makeup, Jay Morrell talking really loud, coming right at you because I'm here beside my freeze dryer. This is a large harvest dryer freeze dryer. Travis is trying to shine his cell phone light towards me. We're good. They can deal with shadows on my face. You're putting that in my eye. That's worse than shadows on my face. Okay, we're just, we're limited. There we go. We can stand that way. Thank you to Harvest Right for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to click Harvest Right's link in my description. With Harvest Right, you can preserve fruit, vegetables, meat, milk, eggs, cheese, dessert products, so much for your family for decades to come. So click my link in the description below, head to harvestright.com and check out these wonderful home freeze dryer setups to help preserve food for your family for when you need it most. Welcome friends. I decided to take four days and do a bunch of massive food preservation, uh, massive meal preservation. Oh yes, I did. We do hundreds of pounds of food in long-term food storage buckets. You can also call them emergency food storage buckets with the food grade buckets and the mylar and the oxygen absorbers. I get into all of that with you with some food that I have purchased and been saving up over the last couple months to do some more food storage buckets. So I show you that entire process. We also work with this amazing Harvest Right freeze dryer. We do the test run for Harvest Right and we then freeze dry quarts and quarts of chicken and veggie soup. It's like preserving my leftovers for up to 20 years. It's amazing. Also, we go foraging on our own property, checking out all the places where we have blackberries already growing. We recently discovered we have several mulberry trees on our property and hickory nut trees. Tell me what to do with hickory nuts, by the way. But at least now, this is our third summer here, so now we're our eyes are opening to what is already here because we've been developing the property so much. So hunting around and looking for those treasures are coming. We also process 20 pounds of strawberries and make a bunch of strawberry and honey homemade jam. Lots of wonderful food storage and food preservation coming up in this video, tours, hopes and dreams as always. So let's jump into massive food preservation, yay. Travis is worried about lighting here. Give me the lighting man. He doesn't like my jokes right now. Anyway, freeze dryer is doing its first run. I got leftovers. You got leftovers? Okay, now, uh, you know I save scraps and I give them to poultry and pigs and ducks and a goose and all that. We also will end up with leftovers from uh, mama's cooking and content creating that go in the freezer or now we're gonna freeze dry them. And with grocery prices skyrocketing, we are gonna work on preserving our leftovers for up to 20 years. Oh yes, we are. Okay, so what are you doing? You're gonna close it. He put, he put my name in it, Jamerell LFT, okay? Close it, hit the start button and it's gonna cool down and while it's cooling down, you're supposed to load your trays okay. with food. And we're we're getting it's started. Done, it's a mess, but we're going to get there. Once it's done cooling down, then we'll load the trays in here and okay. all, everything else is automated. Okay. And they told me that, does it say it in that book too? They told me that the first run should be with bread. This was just from... It doesn't say. It doesn't say. Okay. Well, he told me the first run is with bread because... Like for our leftovers, I'm going to get the leftovers on trays today. I've got a big thing of soup I want to freeze dry. And we're going to put those in the freezer for 24 hours. And then tomorrow we will load those in here and actually get some serious freeze dry eating going. Also, so there's our pump and then there's our bucket, right? Yeah, it drains. So it drains into the bucket. Travis is going to be in charge of the bucket. Yeah, okay. Good deal. Well, let's clean up this mess and, and get ready to freeze dry some bread. So all you do is we'll hit start, okay. and then while it's doing that, you're going to load your trays with food, and then when it's done, you're gonna it'll tell you to load the trays. Okay, wait 15 minutes before loading trays. Well, yeah, we're, we're just doing the test run. Oh, before loading the trays in there. Got it. You got 15 minutes from now to load your to fill your trays with what you're freezing. So do you, 
whenever I'm using this, like tomorrow for the soup, is it just a matter of hitting that button again and right. getting my my trays out, and yeah. then we'll load them? And then it'll tell you. It'll it'll prompt you to. And look, it'll you're on YouTube. Your reflection is showing. <laughs> <It'll> say, <laughs> you're like the neighbor from um, Tool Time. Okay, sorry. It'll say, "Go ahead and load your trays now when it's ready." Okay. And then you can load them. Fun. Okay. Well, let's. I'm gonna get this cleaned up here. And workable. Now we also, I got an extra set of trays so that once we get this uh, bad boy a rolling, pretty much once we get this uh, puppy a rolling, we can always, for the most part, have five trays that are freeze drying and then another five trays that are in the freezer doing the initial freeze so the following day they can go in the freeze dryer. Don't worry, we'll get it. So all I'm going to do now is get this bread out on a tray or two and that's going to be again our test run i'm going to feed it to my chickens <laughs> when it's done because i'm like you know what it's still bread you can tell we have like a few little random heels in a bag um anywho then we're going to get our other trays loaded with my chicken and rice soup that we're going to go ahead and freeze dry and uh, again like i say get this party started Alrighty, so these are my two first initial testing trays that will be going in. Okay, so Travis said that he already um, opened the drain valve. The drain valve is opened here in my bucket. Um, that's for the condensation. Now the big thing he said, and I told him every time I make a move with this machine, I'm going to have you be, be down here and hold my hands because he understands the mechanics of so many things. And so we got to give him credit where credit is due, of course. That must be the um, off and on valve. But anyway, something about when the cycle's done, I don't want the hose down in the bucket under the water because the machine could actually suck that back up and it could damage everything and ruin all the fun. We don't want that. Okay, so I know we're in a wind tunnel in here. I just turned that fan off. Um, load food into freeze dryer, close, drain valve. Travis did whatever needs done with that valve. Read, read your operations manual, so I'm gonna hit continue. Cancel, oh wait, maybe I'm supposed to put my food in there. Don't do it yet. Wait for me. <laughs> oh. I can't be left alone with the freeze dryer yet. Smile, can you come back and help me? It's a good thing that we're gonna be experts at this large freeze dryer by the time this is all said and done, right? So I'm gonna move the bread pans and Travis is gonna come and save us. So let me do this. Okay. And then Naomi brought the leftover soup down for me. It seemed like a good enough place to start. This is some chicken and rice soup. Okay, so everything was fine, and I hit the continue button, and then I went to open the door and it locked me out. So now it thinks it has run. I never got the bread in. When I then looked at the book, read the directions, when I then looked at the book, you were my direction reader, but it is my fault for not looking. I was supposed to place trays on the shelving unit, close the door before I hit continue. So now it's acting like it's at the end and I can't get the door open. Right. Touch the little leaf up there. Little leaf. Okay, Travis says we're good to go now. And you said the, dra the drain valve is closed, it's closed now. but at the end we'll open it. Before you open it. Before we open the door, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Right. Okay, he's here. Now I'm going to not hit that continue button yet. Um, I might need a class on how to open the door. It is. It's like that cryotherapy thing that I did. I did that. I, I was totally uh, frozen. Okay, did, I did that thing. If you've ever heard of it, I did it and lived. Okay. 
nice. Okay, let me give you a peek at what it looks like in there. We got ice around the sides there. Okay. All right, we're doing it. Now we know we have to break the vacuum seal. Not a problem though. Hit continue. Okay, it says freezing. I know that may not show up. I can't tell on my camera if it does or not, but just believe me. It says freezing. It says 22 degrees. Okay, okay. Alrighty, so this was, I'm going to say it was about 10 to 12 quarts of soup. Sorry, I know there's a big shadow there. Let me stand over here. Um, and now I'm second guessing myself looking at my bowl. Anyway, we'll, we'll go with 10. And this has filled six trays. I added a little more to the end here. Just spread, spread it all out a little bit. Uh, this soup was chicken and potatoes, some celery, some carrots, some rice. Very good soup. And so we will freeze dry it now. And then we have little uh, Mylar bags and oxygen absorbers that also came with my Harvest Right set. And so that's how we will be storing this. There are different storing options for longer term storage though. It's the Mylar and the oxygen absorbers. I also, I see in the little direction book that there's um, jars that people put it in. Not for as long of a term though. And we'll see like the volume that we actually get with this. I might choose a couple different storing options. Maybe we will test this soup a little sooner. Right now I just want to get a lot of things preserved and through the freeze dryer and uh, really learn my freeze drying skills and get working with canning and the dehydrator and all of that uh, because we do have a garden and we do have other animals that we're going to process in the fall and so just other options in addition to freezing them. Nothing is wrong with freezing but it's nice to have many other options available. Good morning, happy new day in, in video time. It, it's actually another day here. Travis got me another set of shelves last evening and I've been working on the kids put uh, my different freeze dried food items that I have been slowly adding to my stash here. 
on the shelves pretty good. There's a few things that are scrambled, so we're gonna go through and get those straight. And it looks like our practice freeze dryer run of the bread is complete. But I'm gonna have Travis come downstairs and again, hold my hand a little bit while I do this next step. He's just really good at troubleshooting and mechanical things. And you know, we compliment each other. I'm real good at stirring that spaghetti sauce. So you know, it, it all works out in the end. Anyway, wanted to talk a little bit about here as well, and we've got other food preservation coming up in this video. I've got, there's one of my bags of rice there, I think you see. I got a pile of rice and some oats and some beans. I want to do some more food storage buckets. We're going to work on that. We're going to go a berry picking, and we're going to do jam. So hold on to your hats, friends. There's a lot of massive food preservation happening in this video. Um, but I shared a picture of my new freeze dryer last night on Instagram and Facebook. Got a lot of good questions about it. And so basically, long story short, freeze drying removes all the water possible from anything. Travis can explain the scientific process. I can read it to you from the book. But anyway, folks are asking me, what do you then do with the food? And just like on these cans of already purchased freeze dried food, um, for instance, these are potato slices. And it says, uh, remove the oxygen absorber, cover dehydrated potato slices with boiling water, let stand 15 to 30 minutes, stirring occasionally. Drain the excess water and heat and serve. It says one pound of dehydrated potato slices equals approximately three pounds of fresh potatoes. So, this is pre-purchased, more expensive, someone else did the work for me. With my new large freeze dryer, that freeze dryer can freeze dry up to 2,500 pounds of food a year. And with all the water sucked out of it, it equals a little bit over 500 pounds of stored food, if that makes sense. So you're storing a lot of food in a smaller amount of space. I mean, 500 pounds of food is still a lot of food, but that massive freeze dryer can do it for me and it's less expensive than these. Now, world's a little crazy, a few little things happening, tickles all of my um, mama wants to be prepared and ahead of the game because, you know, it's not just me, it's not just my husband, and yes, single people, married couples without children, everyone should have what they need on hand, yes and amen. The fact that I got a lot of kids and a lot of folks that we're responsible for increases that sensation in, in my mama head for me and I've got to have even more people to be prepared for. What am I prepared for? Well, there are natural disasters, right? Uh, there are weather situations. We just had tornado warnings here the other night. Hey friends, we are going to have so much extra Mega Mama fun in this video. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to click the first link in the description below. Join me now at largefamilytable.com forward slash community to join my extra special and exclusive private membership community where you get a bunch more videos from me, live calls with me, included paid products, special guest, live cooking, meal plans, so much fun. It's a variety of things every month. And you also get access to our two and a half years of included paid products and fun. Uh, over 80 videos. So much is going on over in the Large Family Table community. So click the first link in the description below and join me now while it's available for a super discounted price for a very limited time. Yay. We had one of those. I'm going to say it's called Dryco and I believe I'm saying that incorrect, incorrectly. And there is a little bit of dyslexia and things going on in my mama head. So when people comment on, you know, when I spell things wrong or get a letter switch or don't even pronounce things properly, it's okay because it hasn't held me back. I just work through it and I don't know any difference. So there's that. About 10 years ago, we had this perfect storm, tropical storm thing happen and it was in the summer. We actually had um, a warning where we could have had one this summer, but anyway, it knocked all the electric out in this part of the valley that we live in for well over a week. We used the water from our pond to flush our toilets, but overall we were not prepared. We had a bunch of little kids. It was hot, like stupid crazy hot. It was before we had a pool. 
we went to like our local small town food line to get bottled water and their bank card machines were down. We didn't have cash, we just had our bank cards. And so then we had to drive to another city to get water for the week. It was just a lesson in, we're not really prepared for these kind of things. We were blessed in the fact that we did live on two acres and we did have a pond. So again, toilet flush and water we had. And at that particular time, uh, that was when I was doing my very low budget once a month grocery shopping, like 250 or so dollars a month. And it just happened to fit where I didn't have too terribly much in the refrigerator or the freezer that I had. We were able to store in coolers, get ice, those kind of things, more pantry items, lots of peanut butter and jellies that week. But that was an instance of being out of power for more than a week in the summer. And I've shared in other videos through the years other situations that we have had where we have been out of power flooding situations potential fire evacuation depends on where you live you deal with different things with uh, the weather and the climate in general also uh, financial financial situations to have a food storage is very helpful to have some food storage ready to go to help stretch the budget. Um, I've shared before that we had job loss and uh, we did use food stamps for about four months or so back in the day. During that time we were not prepared. We did not have a, even a, a minimally stocked pantry at that time. I was shopping for about four weeks at the time then as well but I didn't have any kind of reserves. Like once we got to, you know, that middle of the third week into the fourth week, I might've had some canned goods, but not that much left extra. When it was time to shop, it was time to shop. We like ate it all down. So through the years and many life experiences, I am a big believer in having food on hand. My goal in life is I would love to have one year food storage for my family of 11 with potentially some extra to share if needed. I am not there yet. I do think we have about six months or so pretty solid, but I'm not to the one year point and I would love to get there. Now also, yes, growing food. I have had many gardens before. My gardens at the farmhouse, the Lord always blessed them. I had a lot of babies on me, you know, in the wagon all around, and we threw stuff in the ground and we got stuff out and we ate the stuff. And I did some preserving then, but I wasn't trying to do like preserve enough to get us all the way through the winter and then next year do it again. I love my friend Jessica over on Three Rivers Homestead and all of her preserving, so encouraging. And then many of you mentioned, you know, Living Traditions Homestead and Becky on Acre Homestead and they are all phenomenal encourages, encourages in the journey. And what I love about Becky, and so many of you are like, Jimra, watch Becky. And I'm like, Jimra, I know Becky. Becky's my friend. Yay. But anyway, um, she's a couple years in as well. So if you are just getting started, yes, go over and watch Becky. I think this is like her third gardening season, and she's doing phenomenal. And she's got videos all the way. And she's got videos. I think she started on YouTube January 2021. So she had just had her first garden when she started. And then last year was her second garden, and then this year's her third. So if you want to watch someone who's been able to like go all in and do all the wonderful gardening things, fantastic place to start. All that to say, I am gardening, okay? Last year, I could not, between the new sweet baby and the kidney thing, watch the videos. If you know, you know. Can't always do all the things. And so those were my balls that dropped for last year. But we still had things we accomplished. Okay, so... This year we're growing things, and I want to preserve the things. On our property now, I know, we've discovered just in the last week we have white mulberry trees. They're apparently busting with berries. Apparently the blackberries are up on our paths. This is our third summer here. We moved here February 2020. Summer 2020 was jam-packed. Last summer, anyway, we're getting our berries this year. I have not gone looking for berries but kids are reporting back would you believe that I don't tour all seven acres all day every day but the kids do so like mom there's berries everywhere we're gonna get this so back to the freeze drying I'm interested in the freeze drying because yes I have invested in these bot freeze dried items and these do have a shelf life of up to 20 25 some things 30 years they are phenomenal however they are expensive. 
Now I felt it was very important, especially since I didn't know how long it was going to take to get my freeze dryer or what was involved and I hadn't talked with Harvest right yet. I just knew I wanted to get some, I wanted, I'm always looking for ways to expand our pantry storage. And so starting out, you know, at the grocery store and at Sharp Shopper, buying some extra canned goods. So I have purchased canned goods. I've added canned goods to our pantry storage. Two years ago, I started doing the, the short-term and long-term food storage buckets, and we are going to do some more of those in this video. And I have things like wheat berries and flour and dry milk, lots of rice, because white rice in particular is phenomenal for longer-term food storage. I have noodles. I have many things and I've done videos about that I've added to our longer term food storage. And so new for 2022, I wanted to add in freeze drying and I wanna dust off my jars and get back into canning. Again, been a canning dabbler for quite a while, but this year we're doing it, right? So back to these freeze dried food. I don't even know that you can get these on Amazon, but this is ground beef. Okay, two cups of freeze dried ground beef is the equivalent to one pound of uncooked ground beef. This uh, Mountain House brand has a 30 plus year guarantee. It says on the back of their cans. But I wanna say at one point, I, and I I've, I've have a handful of these, maybe I have eight of these and so when I ordered like my first two I think they were $56 then I think they went up to 78 I haven't checked recently if it's still what last time I checked it wasn't available might be available again now so all that to say that's you know a lot of ground beef there I have ground beef in my freezer so I can take my ground beef I've already purchased and basically do the equivalent of freeze drying it with my own machine you can also, I know recently in my area, so talking about the uh, the cost savings of the machines. I know they're an investment. And I've talked to some different families who are do, setting up their freeze dryer in a variety of ways. I've talked to families who are, several families are going in together and getting a freeze dryer and just taking turns. Uh, there's families who, they have a layaway plan. I think it's a couple hundred dollars down to like hold your freeze dryer and you pay on it and then they ship it after your last payment. I've talked to families who have taken their tax return this year and they are investing in their freeze dryer. Also some families where maybe they would have done a one week vacation. Well, instead this year their vacation is they're investing in the freeze dryer. So there are ways to do it. Again, I know it is an investment, but the wonderful thing is if you haven't already started buying other freeze dried food, it's a phenomenal cost savings. It's gonna save me more because now I have this start with the freeze dried items and now I'm gonna add to it. Recently in my area, and I'm not sure the whole situation, but there was a grape truck, a truck full of grapes, and boy, I, I, forget, I forget the reason that I heard. Supply chain issue, truck, something with the truck. There was a truck full of grapes in my area, and I had a friend who got wind of this. They were basically selling the grapes for a phenomenal price. I was in Florida when all of this was happening. She's got a ton of grapes and she has been preserving them in a variety of ways. When you get your phenomenal food deals, your seasonal deals, I know our favorite local orchard in two weeks, they're gonna have peaches and we're gonna be in the peach business. Yes, we are. Uh, this is a great time seasonally to be getting your fruits and vegetables in bulk. Of course, I'm doing my garden, but I also have some plans. We have a large produce auction in our area. so in and amongst preserving what i'm growing i also plan to go to the produce auction uh am i growing enough tomatoes am i not how much do i need i'm gonna go to the produce auction and get my tomatoes my friend ashley bufa in fact that's what she does a lot of times is she goes to the produce auction to get her fruits and vegetables as far as canning goes and feeding her family with 10 kids so and then another question I received is how to store things after you freeze dried. So I've worked a lot with Mylar bags and oxygen absorbers in these food storage buckets. And the Mylar that I use with the buckets can be resealed so I get my bags a little bigger so I can do that as needed. Um, and it does need a new oxygen absorber every time. With 
my freeze dryer harvest right set a collection of mylar bags ready to go and also oxygen absorbers from them so the foods that I'm doing in my harvest right I'm going to use those bags first then I'll either get more from them or get some more from another source but I plan to do as many leftovers as I can and other random odds and ends that I have and I've been having a great time talking to people online who've been preserving eggs and milk sour cream I mean you could just do it all you wouldn't really freeze dry slices of bread so I hope the bread isn't too confusing it was recommended to me by my contact at Harvest Right to do to to use bread only to test my machine in its initial cycle so I'm not uh, wasting any food potentially or whatever and I know I have animals I can throw throw my bread out in the woods if I need to feed the squirrels but I plan on just throwing it to my chickens see what they do um, Anyway, don't let the bread confuse you, but you can freeze dry just about anything. I believe in the Harvest Right book, it says, you know, don't do bread and honey is another one. I do have, I thought I had, okay. Now, how did they do this? I don't know, or maybe they're just more experts at it. I do have some honey powder. Oh, it's cane sugar, honey, and fructose. Okay, and you bring it to a boil, low boil, five to 10 minutes during frequently. Place in a covered jar, cool, use as you would with fresh honey. This is a good brand. If you are, you know, waiting for your freeze dryer, if you want to build your freeze dry storage, I buy this brand on Amazon as well. Use within one year of opening. Unopened product stays fresh for up to 30 years. Yes. Okay. Contains an oxygen absorber. So anyway, that's where you can look for your honey powder. I have a couple containers of that. I have butter powder. So anyway, friends, I'm going to just take a minute and organize this little collection to start. Like again the, the various freeze-dried meat I've got some chopped chicken here also some sausage crumbles these are like $78 now um, the price on them keeps going up so again part of my plan is I want to work on freeze-drying meat to get it out of my freezers and build up my freeze drying storage um, in the meantime like that so even though the garden's not ready I mean we do have some green tomatoes and a couple peppers so see and hope there um, um, I hope to in the meantime also besides things like leftovers work on working through my meat and freeze drying that also potatoes because apparently I do buy a lot of freeze dried potatoes and the reason is when I started buying these, um, these were like $12, $13. And so if I have an Amazon order, I might get one or two more cans. I don't know what they are today. Potatoes and for entry into freeze dried food and adding that to my storage and, and rotating that through. So I was just telling Travis what I'm doing here. So this is empty at the bottom, but this is gonna be 
fruits and then this will be vegetables and then meat and potatoes apparently and I'm going to organize like dairy type products and sweetener up at the top um, but then I can realistically see I could probably get like some organizing bins to put my um, our home freeze-dried food in and label those and put them beside these items and then these shelves how much were these Trev? Okay, $1.99 for this shelf set, but in our pantry storage area, Travis has, I don't know, how many do we have in there? But Yeah, we got a bunch in there, and they've been really good for canned goods and such. So, if you're looking for some good, strong pantry shelves, we got these at Lowe's, right? And then, did we get some at Tractor Supply, too? Or they've always been, they, okay, they've all been from Lowe's. You know that Lowe's isn't a sponsor, but should be. So, Travis got these for me yesterday. And then make sure the hose is not in water. So okay. So the hose is not in water. And we turn I turn it towards me. It goes with the light. Okay. Travis will be my cameraman. Nothing that's in the way of my hat. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, and so it says open drain to vent valve to open drain valve to vent. So we let it vent, and then what happens? Okay, we were just reading. We need to push the option to warm the trays because it has been a little bit since it's finished, and so it warms them again, right? To keep them from freezing your fingers. To keep it from freezing our fingers. That's nice. Okay. So I'm going to pull it out. That's wonderful. Okay, Travis is reading the manual thoroughly for us. I'm going to organize the fruit here. So I've got um, two containers of apple slices, one container of applesauce, one thing of raspberries. I mean, not, not a lot of fruit freeze dried. Um, a little, this is just a little container of blackberries. One little container of blueberries. So we'll definitely need to up my fruit game here. Again, when I started, I was trying to do, you know, priorities, meat and potatoes. I do have some rice down here. And so this brown rice has a seven year shelf life, it says. They're not telling me on this package, but it's always way more than the brown rice. Oh, and then this is tomato powder, so we'll put that on the veggie shelf. Ta-da! Our test trays. Freeze-dried bread. It feels freeze-dried. <laughs> Again, guys, the bread was just the test to make sure our machine is running properly overall. So don't don't uh, fixate on the bread there. That's just crumbly stuff for the chickens. So now they want you to, uh, if there's ice in here, which there is, they mm -hmm. want you to defrost. Okay. Even if we're running another cycle? Yeah, because you got to get the ice out. Okay. So we're going to hit the defrost button. Okay. Keep drain valve open, remove product, pump will run for five minutes. Okay, and that pump is a running. Okay, and so um, of course we will. This is my little bowl. I was gonna pick some berries in. I'm gonna move my phone so we can get the full picture. I'm gonna move my water. There you go. So lots of room here on these shelves, which is what I wanted to see. And so hopefully over this summer and fall and into infinity and beyond, we will continue to do home freeze drying and fill these the rest of the way. Now that I got my base stash, fill it the rest of the way with home freeze dried foods. So I'm not expecting like a huge berry haul, but I wanted to check around here. We have this whole, we have a couple different wooded areas. This is one of them. 
I know I was seeing blackberry plants before. Just want to check out. We also found out we have at least two hickory nut trees. So check your yard, friends. Check your woods. You might have things growing. I know at our farmhouse, the whole two acres was fenced. It was all covered in blackberries. And we did a lot of blackberry harvesting every year. And I did some jams and such. And we just ate them right off the fence every evening when we walked. We are going to poke around in here, though, just to see what we have growing naturally. So, no, no, these are blackberries in here. So we do have a bunch of blackberries in here. They do not look ready yet at all. I mean, they're just little green things. And then let Mama walk down this way. We got more back there, more in there more i'm seeing them oh i see a bunch in there and a bunch here well i guess we're just uh scouting out for later right tons oh. all of these will be big juicy blackberries benny mommy will have to wear a long sleeve shirt and some jeans Blackberry. yeah they're not ready they're growing all through there i see them Blackberry. some more down there yeah though they're green berries it right was, now oh, it's red. It's did you see well we also have those little um faux wild strawberries that are just fake that are not, not really fake. wild there are there are some remember we read about that plant that looks like a wild strawberry i can't remember the name of it right now but it's not we're going to do more animal fencing in here soon so i guess i will see about whenever we work on um doing our fencing and stuff maybe i can leave the blackberries along the outside these definitely are a little a sweet small variety now the ones that we had at the farmhouse fence they were like, you know, big, thick, heavy blackberries. We will take all the berries in all the forms. That is fine. And I'm still finding some. It's actually easier. Uh -huh. So we're playing a dragon game. Benjamin, you just you just hatched out of your egg, right? Yes. I didn't name you yet. Okay, but I was thinking of naming you Smokey because you were a little dragon. And you had smoke coming out. Anyway, yes, and so it's a little easier for me to film on the perimeter. Otherwise, I have to like I mean, step I into this woods. Like oh, I love it, Benjamin. You are so creative. Sounds good. Can yeah. you fly yet, little dragon? They only do that when they're cold. Food, they only fly when they're cold. Is that? No, they only do up and do it in Oh, a little ball. Okay. Okay. That's good. Mm hmm And I've set my timer, camera friends, for about 30 minutes. I figure Benny and I will just play around the property and walk and just get all the berries we can for 30 minutes. Except somebody's eating some, huh? <laughs> yes. You're making the juice. And uh, he just got out of the pool, too. So that's why he's got his dragon towel. Got quite a bit in here. I'll have to get my little bowl. Hey, Benjamin, can you bring me my little green bowl? It's behind me. We do yipping calls. So when the kids are looking, they start whooping, and I start going, yip, yip, yip. You can find each other that way. <laughs> it's just a, how we do it around here. So here's our little blackberry harvest, and now we're gonna go check out the mulberry situation. Okay, so apparently this is one of the mulberry trees. We're gonna give it a shake. We're not prepared, they're eating berries off of them. We'll get a few out of this. Okay, so here's another mulberry tree. I'm seeing, I didn't, uh, wasn't, wasn't planning to have to get a ladder, but we do have a bunch on the ground. We're getting some of those that look okay. And we're gonna shake some of these. Yes, only eat the black ones. That is what we've read. Gently bending the branches here. Our little shaking method wasn't working as well. And then this whole area is blackberries. So even though we got a couple cups today, that's cool. But we'll have a lot more in the coming weeks. We'll have to check this often, okay? Another week, another two weeks, I bet we'll have a bunch more. Alrighty, so I'm thinking we have two cups at least, 
maybe two and a half, could be three. We'll measure them out inside. I'm gonna get them soaking for a little bit now. But we also have, I believe, at least 20 pounds of strawberries for jam. Okay, little wooded area. Hello, Virginia creeper. And so, some lilies there. And then, some lilies here. And so, they need a, a proper home. Okay, I will bring the wheelbarrow back. We got a whole wheelbarrow full of lilies here. And there's another big pile we'll come back and pick up. All right, so a lot of these, I mean, they're whole, it's, that's multiple bulbs there. So I just love doing stuff like this. And so I went through that dirt as much as possible. I don't think I left any bulbs. Now, back at our farmhouse, back in the day, I mean, I had a, a negative zero plant budget. We had a ton of tiger lilies that grew along the road that we lived at, particularly right behind our mailbox. So I spent a whole summer just doing like five gallon buckets as many as I could every day and I did the whole uh, area around the farmhouse and I call these tiger lilies there's a couple different names for them they're the orange ones uh, but they're the ones you see growing along the roads and they're the same ones growing here so I'll show you where I'm going to transplant these to but some other garden areas I'm slowly developing I'm going to add these to our pile Again, they won't they won't perk up or do anything too amazing this year but next year they'll be settled and they'll have babies I have my uh, sorry up the nose shot have some preteens and teens digging a big lily hole for me okay got that done now we got three little tomatoes little tomato there tomato there tomato over there so Things are growing and starting to happen. So I have taken a little mama rest probably for the last hour, I believe. Sitting in the air conditioner, drinking the beverages, and I ate some good stuff. Got a little bit of salad left there, still working on that. So my hopes and dreams coming up are, I'm gonna get out of this chair, I'm gonna do it. When I get out of this chair, we're gonna go do that long-term food storage. Yes, we are. Gonna set up my whole little assembly line. And then, we're getting to that jam. So, I have water bath canners, uh, which seems like a pot and a rack and a lid. But, I had picked up, I'll, I'll turn back around and show you what I got. This is the pectin that we're gonna use. This is from my Azure Standard Order. It says gels with low amounts of any sweetener. And it talks about how you can use honey or stevia. This one box makes up to 22 half pint, the eight ounce jars. You can double, triple, half or quarter recipes, adjust pectin for a softer or firmer gel, vegan, gluten-free, non-GMO. And so it has a little instruction book with it. It has no sugars or preservatives. And what it uses, um, instead is it has a little pack of calcium that comes with it but anyway 
Um, here's the their directions with low sugar or honey. And you can also use sugar. You can just use less of it. It says dry or liquid s sweeteners that measure like sugar or honey can be used. And lots of good information on here for doing either jam or jelly. Jam is made with the fruit and jelly is made with the fruit juice. Oh, and up here it's talking about stevia concentrate or no sweetener at all. Just little ways to tweak it. So I'm going to use these, this go, go round when we do all this jam. Okay, and of course, just want to mention this before we go do those buckets. We are, I'm getting up, I'm getting up, but this is what I do in my spare time. I'm looking at my preserving books. The Ball Blue Book Guide to Preserving is the one of the go-to books for canning and also the USDA Complete Guide to Home Canning. Both of these are the books that you should follow. So even in this Ball Blue Book, so they have a strawberry jam recipe for low or no sugar added. They also have a nice variation of a couple different ways that you can do it. And while I ate, I had a kiddo sit here. They washed the strawberries, got all the tops off for me. So these will be ready for us to work with here shortly. Now I'll test one. Oh boy. And we do have a little water in our bucket now. Okay, okay. Alrighty, so we're gonna take our test spread out to the chickens. It says it's um, cooling the vacuum chamber, wait 15 minutes to load our tray. So chicken bread time. So then whenever we're talking about food preservation and preparedness in general, one of my favorite books is called A Year Without the Grocery Store by my friend Karen Morris. Karen has been kind enough to come over to my membership community so many times. We've done live calls, she's done special videos. We have a lot of A Year Without the Grocery Store deep dive info over there. We've even done a real gentle book club where Karen came on and did extra calls and even more questions on that. So I'm very thankful for her and all the time she has spent visiting us over in Large Family Table Community membership. And if you're one of the many new ladies who have joined us, joined us recently, there is over two and a half years of content that you get to go through, including all those special videos and live calls and deep dive info with Karen and many other Ninja Mom experts over in the Large Family Table Community. And for the past two and a half years, there's been many months where I've done live cooking. We've had some extra adventures with that as well. There's some months where we have a free meal plan for the entire month. Actually, located over in membership, we have 52 one-week meal plans, all thought out with links to the recipes, complete with grocery list. Also, many of my popular cooking packs, such as sheet pan meals. We got sheet pan breakfast, lunches, and dinners. We also have mega, mega head holiday cooking packs located over there. We also have electric pressure cooker and slow cooker four week meal plans. Again, all the recipes, all thought out, the complete grocery list. Those are for sale over in my shop at shop.largefamilytable.com, but over in the private membership at largefamilytable.com community.com many of those products are included with membership in fact whenever you join now my membership is currently open for a little bit longer you can click the first link in the description below and join me now over in membership you get one of my new products every month those are valued at $14.99 or higher you get several additional videos with me each month. Again, I always bring in an expert friend to teach us something new, some more tips and tricks. Recently, we had a Ninja Mom expert do a class for us on entertaining without losing your mind. We appreciate that, yes we do. That's from a friend of mine with 10 kids who also does a lot of catering, does a lot of entertaining. She'll have whole soup nights at her house where she'll have 50 or 60 people over so she knows a lot about entertaining in the process and again without losing her mind and I appreciated all of her helps. 
we have videos over there on inflation recipes and inflation cooking, different ways to stretch the grocery budget. I've done some deep dives into sharing about my days of having a $250 to $300 a month grocery budget and different ways I've stretched my pennies doing that. I also do special request videos whenever there's certain videos that members would like to see. And even over in membership, before it was out on YouTube, I did a special tour with my freeze dryer and my freeze dried food setup and answered their behind the scene questions and much more. So I only opened the membership community once in 2021. Folks have asked me why I only open it once or twice a year and because it takes some extra effort whenever we get the new folks in and get them settled. And then I spend the rest of my time focusing on the special private membership community and having all the live calls and fun and learning with them over there as well. We have other special guests coming up this summer who are going to be doing more teaching on food preservation. I'm sharing even more about food preservation over there and taking time to have deeper conversations, more behind the scenes, chit chats, tons of resources, and much more. So again, just click the first link in the description below. You can read all about it and join me now while membership for the Large Family Table community is open for 2022. A Year Without the Grocery Store is the book that I bought in spring 2020 and Karen's directions in that book is what helped me get started with this long-term food storage bucket system that I'm going to show you and also taught me about short-term food storage and ways to get food storage and grow it and, and how to rotate your buckets and check in on your food storage. It, again, A Year Without the Grocery Store, it is phenomenal. Another book that I have really enjoyed is called The Prepper's Pantry. I wish I had my copy of A Year Without the Grocery Store here to hold up. I bought two copies of it. I also sent a third copy to a friend and I have it on audiobook. So, you know, like for, just, it's here, right? Um, another book that has been very helpful is called The Prepper's Pantry. And it says, build a nutritious stockpile to survive blizzards, blackouts, hurricanes, pandemics, economic collapse, and other disasters. So yeehaw, she's got it all covered. What I appreciate in here also is uh, based on the consensus among several different food calculators the following amounts are an annual supply for one family member over age seven so I have taken her numbers and at the time I multiplied this by 10 I need to multiply it really by 11 or 13 or 15 we we are a family of 11 our oldest son is married they are expecting their first baby so in our house though we still have 11 because my mom is here a whole lot I just go ahead and plan 11 as always and then if we have our son and his wife potential new grandbaby, sometimes other folks visiting. It's just good to have a little extra if you're able. For one person, for one year, 300 pounds of grains, 60 pounds of beans, 75 pounds of dry milk, 60 pounds of sugar, 15 pounds of fats, and 1,500 servings of fruits and vegetables, which can be a combination of dried, canned, and fresh, of course. Um, and she gave some an examples of grains, rice flour, wheat, quinoa, couscous, cornmeal, barley, oats, pasta. So she gives great examples. If you want to head over to Amazon and pick up this book, I'll also link it for you down below. And also my friend Karen in her family, she has shared and she shares about in her book as far as dairy free, dairy sensitivities, gluten free. Uh, and different experiences within her own family. So that book will also be linked below for you to hop over and get as well. So all that to say, uh, whenever I had this multiplied by 10, okay, if I was try if, in trying to do a year's worth of food storage, uh, that's 3,000 pounds of grains, 600 pounds of beans, 750 pounds of dry milk, 600 pounds of sugar, 180 pounds of fats and 15,000 servings of fruits and vegetables. So when you see my maybe 200 pounds of rice that we're gonna put in buckets and I'm looking here from the side, I think 50 to 60 pounds of beans. I believe I have maybe a 50 pound bag of oats. Just know these are really small little drops in the bucket 
of what I would need to have for an emergency one year food storage for my family of 11. All right, so I've been doing some organizing with the food that I've gathered up to put into more like a rotating long-term food storage. I've laid it all out here in piles. I've set my buckets out. Next thing I need to do is put my Mylar bag in each bucket, but I wanted to give you a tour on what I'm working on so far. So here is my little setup. I have my rice laid out. I can usually get 20 to 25 pounds in each bucket for most things. So rice wise, which includes these buckets up here, those two there, and then we're going to make it down yonder. That's two 50 pound bags. It's a total of 275 pounds of rice. And then we have 40 pounds of beans total, two 10 pound bags of black beans, two 10 pound bags of pinto beans. And let me say with the rice, I have not gotten this all at one time. I've gotten like a five pound bag one time at Walmart. Uh, these 20 pound bags on here these three 20 pound bags I ordered another time I went into Walmart and they had several 20 pound bags so I grabbed another one there so I just collect it for a bit until I have time to make buckets so this is honestly several months of me getting rice here and there uh, and then doing this big bucket project then I have some things I had gotten from Azure that also have been needing to go into storage this is a 50 pound bag of old-fashioned oats and let's see here if I don't drop it on me. These are, yeah, 50. So I have two 50 pound bags of hard white wheat. And then I have two 50 pound bags of yellow popcorn. I know priorities. And then down there, the other day I was at Costco and they had 50 pound bags of white rice for $21 each. Had a huge pallet of them. So I got two. And so, woo, let's see if I can fall over my bucket. And food grade buckets are just good for your food storage collection. Um, all of these I have gotten at Lowe's. And so, again, we go into Lowe's. I'll check their buckets. If they have a bunch of food grade buckets, I might get two or three at a time. And I just build up a collection because I know I'm also gathering up rice. And there's going to be a time when I take an evening and really get all this stuff stored up. Um, also, let me show you the lid. So, lid-wise, over here, I've got a collection of... These are just... These are just kind of a, a basic button lid. Um, these you can seal, they don't have to be though. And then, and so after we do the Mylar, I put one of those lids on. Whenever I'm using something from food storage, uh, you can just get one of these gamma lids to put on your, bu on your bucket. And it works super that way as well. And also, if you have beans and rice, or any kind of pantry item that you're going to use within we'll say six months to a year or so you can just go ahead and put it in a bucket and put a gamma lid on it and use it from there uh, wash your buckets first as well we always wash ours with hot soapy water
Alrighty, so we have the mylar bags in the buckets. Now, the point of the mylar is it helps seal out uh, the odors is a big part of it. Of course, it holds the food and we're going to put in an oxygen absorber at the very end. That's going to suck the air out of it. We're going to seal it. I've got a little heater that we seal it with. The mylar, though, also helps uh, with rodents and other critters helps keep them from smelling what you got in your buckets, which is also helpful. So anyway, now we're going to jump into this. I like doing my little uh, assembly line version. And so we will get everything into the buckets and then I'm going to seal the mylar, um, you know, 75% of the way, 80% of the way across. Then I will open up the pack of oxygen absorbers. They all come together in a pack at least that's how my last pack came so there's 20 of them and as soon as i open it they're going to start absorbing the oxygen in this room so i need to get them in the bags really quick and get them sealed so that'll be a quick process at the end morning, new day, getting back to work now. So last evening, mama got busy doing <laughs> nighttime mama things, helping kids get to bed and all of that. We at least got going and I had everything set out. So once I was able, I just went to bed and I thought it'll be okay till morning. I've got rice in these buckets. I've got the beans in this bucket. I have one random five pound bag of rice that I don't want to push these buckets any farther. Um, you want enough room to get your oxygen absorber in there and for sealing and such. I still need to get the food in the buckets and these are the buckets that I have left. So I'm going to keep on trucking along this morning. The freeze dryer is still running, ran all night, still running this morning. It says drying on it, the little bar's continuing, so that is great progress. And I hope this video encourages you just to look for little extra ways that you can gather up some extra food storage for your family. As I mentioned, these five pound bags of rice I've been picking up over the last several months. The oatmeal and some of the other things are here and there from different Azure orders. The buckets are available at Lowe's. Uh, it's a lot cheaper there than ordering online. From what I have seen, maybe you will find different. There's still many sources for the Mylar bags and the oxygen absorbers. Azure has been out of oxygen absorbers, but on Amazon I can still find most things. Just remember in 2020 when things really hit, things uh, almost overnight were gone. Like it was hard to find buckets and oxygen absorbers and Mylar and toilet paper and a lot of things. So in times like this where things are a little unsteady. It's also a good time to look at where you're already located. What are the resources around you? Like we did not even know. We've been on this property almost two and a half years now. We didn't even know until this year that we had mulberry trees. My kids have been telling me they've been eating these berries that are like blackberries, but a little sweeter. This year we realized what those are. Uh, we have a ton of blackberries on this property. I did not 
realize fully until we went looking yesterday like I'm going to purposely go and there's a whole other section of woods I didn't even check and so when we are doing more fencing and more development on this property I want to leave those blackberries intact again at our farmhouse we had a lot I mean they must have been really really old blackberry bushes because it was like the the giant blackberries here they seem like little straggly blackberries mm -hmm. but that's okay because it's fun and we're still going to use them in jam but look around what's on your property also hickory nut trees I know now we have hickory nut trees please tell me if you have hick hickory nut trees what do you do with them <laughs> so that's something I need to learn but my mother-in-law was here a few weeks ago and she was telling me I think you have hickory nut trees and I was like oh I think we do too so it's a good time to learn things uh, it's a good time to take inventory it's a good time to try to get a bit ahead uh, if you if nothing else if you can do whenever you're at the grocery store not even every item but if you have something that you buy all the time try to buy an extra and also like I mentioned earlier some people teach which isn't a bad thing as long as your budget allows if you have if you have one item you buy often get one for now two for later I think Jordan Page talks about that often so just look for little ways that you can help build up food storage and some food preservation techniques for your family
handy dandy hair straightener. I'm going to get this warming up and then I'm gonna do each bag. We will seal it about three quarters of the way over. Then I'm gonna open that oxygen absorber pack and we're gonna get it stuck in every single bucket. I'm going to push out as much air as I possibly can and then we are going to come around and do that last little one inch seal on everything and let the oxygen absorber do the rest. I am using 2000 cc oxygen absorbers in all of these buckets. That's what I have. That should work pretty well for these five gallon buckets. I know I was just reading this morning in Daisy Luther's book, uh, Prepper's Pantry, about how when she does five gallon buckets, she'll do one oxygen absorber in the middle and then another one on the top. I hadn't heard that tip before, so that's another thing to try. But again, this book, Prepper's Pantry, and also A Year Without the Grocery Store by my friend Karen Morris, uh, both fantastic resources for getting started with all of this. I know Karen talks about whenever you're doing your buckets for your long-term food storage. You can, of course, check in on your buckets. You can rotate them through some of your short-term food storage. So if you have a bucket of I know it's a good idea to rotate buckets through. So if you get a bucket of pinto beans and you work through using that and then you can replace that bucket and add it back to your food storage. You also want to be sure uh, not to heat your iron up too terribly hot. You don't want to burn a hole in your Mylar bag. Um, also, if you don't have an iron, I believe in Karen's book, she talked about getting, you know, a clothes iron and a board and she would lay the board under her bags and get a smooth edge and use the clothes iron. Uh, somewhere along the way, or maybe you all in my YouTube comments, someone started telling me about hair straightener and I moved over to doing the hair straightener trick. It's a Revlon, haha. -ha. So uh, they also sell irons, but they're basically like a flat iron anyway, specific to food storage and such. So I went with this. I realize we're in the depths of my dark basement with a hair straightener, what could go wrong? But anyway, thank you for dealing with me with the lighting. It's just the angle of my camera right now. I was thinking about as I was sealing these buckets because I've done buckets over the last several years. I've shared about them on YouTube before, especially in 2020. So I'll link some of those original food storage bucket videos down um, in the description below. But if someone would be interested to know how much does it cost to make your own food storage bucket that has a potential shelf life of up to 30 years. So right now, these 50 pound bags of rice, how as I mentioned at Costco, they were $21. And each 50 pound bag of rice filled one bucket. So approximately $10.50 for about 25 pounds of long grain white rice the Mylar bag was under a dollar. The oxygen absorber was under a dollar. Let's just say the two together are about a dollar. Is that okay? Then the food grade bucket was around $7. And then the lid was about another $2. So that's about a $20 investment, you know, approximate to store a 25 pound bag of long grain white rice long term. Hopefully you can see this. Uh, Right now, currently June 2022 on Amazon, there's a 24 pound pail of long grain white rice already packaged, already done for $53. So by doing your own buckets of white rice, you can save well over 50% of the cost. Now, if you're in a pinch, and if you just wanna get some buckets of rice, sometimes you have more time than money, sometimes you have more money than time, if you just need to go ahead and buy yourself four of these buckets so you have some emergency food storage started, go for it. I will also link some of these in the description below for you. Another example of the cost savings is we have, it's a 24 pound bucket of pinto beans 
It's a four gallon pail. And currently, again, June 2022, it's $134. Those bags of beans, I want to say they were about $1.37 or so a pound. It'll be out in my recent Costco haul, 10 pound bag. I'm just going to round up for the sake of sanity and we'll say, and we'll say it was, it was under $15, $1.37 times 10 pounds. 1370 times two bags to fill it. So $27 roughly for the 20 pounds of beans. And then we have our oxygen absorber and our mylar and our bucket and our lid. Under $40 to get pretty close to same amount of beans in long-term food storage. So that's a really good savings. dryer update we are on looks like 15 hours 19 minutes and 59 seconds it is still doing its thing so I just had to take a break for a family meal but just before I did what I was working on was going through and I just write on a piece of duct tape what is in each bucket you can also take a sharpie and write it on the outside of your bags so any way that it would work for you i still have some more homemade labels and buckets to make so i'm going to get back at that now So that whole crimping process, squeezing the air out, getting the oxygen absorber in, using my handy dandy hair straightener, I got four minutes and 50 seconds left. So what did that take me? Four minutes and 10 seconds to get that done. I just had to keep going. I got one bucket I don't have an oxygen absorber for, which is fine. I'll just label it as such and that'll be used more quickly. Also, I'm skipping out on today doing buckets with the popcorn. I have no popcorn in any kind of storage. Um, so we'll be good on popcorn with that, uh, but I'll need four more buckets for those things.
Alrighty, so we got these buckets done. The freeze dryer is still working on its cycle, freezing that chicken and rice soup. So now we're going to go upstairs, we're going to make a bunch of strawberry jam. Yeah, there is a little bit of juice now, that's fine. Just let the juice drip in there too. Juicy, juicy. And then I'll bring this towel over. Good. And let's see how many we got yesterday. Thereabouts. Try and get them all even. So they're right about two cups. That's pretty good. We're never, never having picked berries at this property before. Would you go put those little leaves, sweetie, in um, the chicken bowl? They'll eat those. And then Daniel is going to get, you bring the masher over here, Daniel. And he's going to work on oh, getting started mashing. Okay, so now the fun begins. <laughs> Daniel has been working really hard while I've been getting our jars ready. We're going to also put some in the blender too to help get us going. I know, it's been great. haven't added our sugar yet but we're it's getting there really mm -hmm. okay so I think I showed you the little low sugar pectin boxes I was using and I also watched um, Melissa K Norris has a great video on doing the uh, old-fashioned strawberry jam the way that her grandma did it and they would use a green apple sliced up or shredded up as their natural pectin so um, I'll try to link that video below or just search Melissa K. Norris and look for her strawberry jam video. This, I believe you say it, Pomona pectin. And I was doing the little math here and so it dealt with four cups of mashed fruit. Well, we have 28 cups of mashed fruit. So I'm gonna do the math from there as to what we need. Based on the four cups of mashed fruit, the directions are half a cup to one cup of honey or three fourths of a cup to two cups of sugar cut for every four cups of mashed fruit. So if we've got 28 cups mashed divided by the four cups, so that would be at the most seven cups of honey. Divided by two. So yeah, three and a half to seven cups of honey. So Daniel just brought me a couple different honey options. Uh, this container of honey is about 10 cups. And so I think we'll just go right in the middle, Daniel. We'll aim for five cups. No, no, we'll just open this big one and try to use half of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think. That one equals two cups. And so by my little quick math here, we can use three and a half to seven cups of honey along with the 28 cups of mashed fruit. So I'm just kind of easy eyeballing if we just look at half of this container. We'll have some strawberry honey jam. How's that sound? Mm -hmm. Daniel was looking for a name for it. We could call it that, strawberry honey jam. You like that? Strawberry, mm -hmm. mulberry, blackberry, honey. <laughs> yeah, we need to mix all the notes. We, we can't, that's fine if we don't come to a mulberry stressed. We, we know they're the in there. Yeah. The honey. We can just do strawberry honey jam. Alrighty, so I just added in my proper amount of calcium water that comes with this particular set that I got from Azure Standard. Next, we're going to add the pectin to the honey. I'm 
lost my help for the moment, which is fine. Lots of exciting things to do here around this evening. So it said to mix the pectin and the room temperature honey. That's what we're doing. The kids running in now with flashlights, so. Here's our pectin stirred honey. So also with the foam that you get on top of the strawberry jelly, you can add a little pat of butter and that cuts down on that. Some people like the foam, some don't. So if you have feelings on that, you can try the little butter trick. And we do this up to a fourth of an inch head space. I've got my little measuring tool here to double check myself. the top of the jar rims with some white distilled vinegar.
You know what I forgot to do? Forgot to add some vinegar to my canner. So, when you forget to do that, as I have done many times before, just put a little vinegar on a washcloth and then when they come out, you wipe them down. It gets uh, just a film on it. It's kind of white and dusty looking. It's not pretty. So if you put some vinegar in your water while it's boiling, while it's canning, whether you're doing pressure canning or water bath canning, it takes care of most of that. So you have prettier jars, but I don't want to disturb this boil because I already set my timer. So anyway, we'll have to do that tomorrow after they set out for the night. All right, so I just went through and tested these. All of these look like they sealed fine, except for one, you know, because they don't push down. Look here, that one didn't seal. So that's fine. That one's just gonna go in the refrigerator and the kids will eat this, eat that this week. I also had about three quarters of a jar that wasn't enough to can and uh, the kids have that too. But have a lot of kids, have a lot of homemade jam, it's not an issue. And then this is, oh yeah, that one wasn't even, wasn't even, something happened there. Anyway, you can see how, how nice and thick and jammy it is. All right, so I just wrote, I wrote SBH Jam 6 2022, stands for Strawberry Honey Jam. So there we go, yay. All righty, happy new day. So it says process complete, open drain valve to vent. This is where I don't wanna accidentally suck up water. Looks like we got enough room. Now I gotta reach in there. I just went ahead and put that on the floor to be extra sure. And now we are warming the trays. So my setup came with oxygen absorbers, just like we were using with our buckets. It came with these Harvest Right Mylar bags. And then super fancy upgrade, it came with this impulse sealer. Remember how we were using the flat iron? Well, they have a sealer that we will be able to seal our bags with. So, um, hello new life. I'm gonna read the little direction set up here for it. Alrighty, so it's set in the directions that the mylar should be set at seven. Just seeing if there's anything, I've got it plugged in now. So it feels very much like the consistency of mashed potato flakes. I mean, you could tell I had to like get comfortable touching it and figure out how to pick it up. And then by the end, I was just crushing it down in this bag so that I could fit an entire tray in here. And I wrote on the bag before, chicken and veggie soup, first freeze dryer batch, 6 2022. I figure we are going to test this out and use this this summer 
very well, I am sure, and probably in the comments below, there's probably things that I haven't done correctly or I'm still learning about, and you know how all that goes, but I love sharing the experiences with you all and gaining the wisdom for others. There's a lot of freeze dryer group. Of course, when you head over to harvestright.com, and I'll have the link for them down in the description below with the whole library of links I will have for this video for you, they explain the whole process, give you lots of tips. They have videos, they show you how it's done. But I'm excited to share my first freeze dried batch of anything with you. I shared some pictures over on Facebook and Instagram and I've heard from several people. Uh, one lady in particular, they just got their freeze dryer in the last six weeks and she says they've just been running it nonstop, doing you know eggs, milk, meat, meals, leftovers, everything they possibly can get a hold of for their freeze dryer. So I actually have a trip that I'm leaving on today. It's our son who just graduated. It's his graduation trip. We're going to go to DC for a couple days. But when I get back, we're going to we're going to continue on and uh, get some more parties started. Okay, so I got the rest of the bags labeled. We're gonna get those filled now. Just wanna show you all these little pieces on the tray. I'm still gonna get these. I'm just trying to get the majority of the bags filled. Then we'll get these little scraps. Then we'll do the oxygen absorbers. And then we will seal our bags. Yay, first freeze dried batch. I know it's loud in here, but this, it feels just like foam. So, not a perfect system. I'm just kind of breaking it up before I bring its bag over. And then I will break it up more once I fit it in the bag. Now, I do still have a couple other trays that are freezing, but again, I have to go today. I think I might have three more trays. So all of that, I'll just have to deal with when I get back home. If I have three more trays of this soup, and then I can do two more trays of even milk. We get our milk from a local farmer for the most part. I still supplement some from the store, just depending on, his farm's about 15 minutes away, if we can get over there or not. 80% of our milk is coming from a local farm. So I might, when I get home, do some uh, farm fresh milk on the other two trays just to work with that and I do have powdered milk in my food storage already for us to rotate through but again I'm I want to learn all things home freeze dryer thank you to harvest right for sponsoring today's video you can look down in the description and click my link to head over to harvestright.com learn all about these amazing home freeze dryers where you can preserve your leftovers for up to 20 years you can preserve fresh fruits and vegetables meat products milk eggs cheese so much there's even people who are taking their home freeze dryers from harvest right and freeze drying candy and then creating side hustle businesses where they're selling this candy all kinds of great entrepreneurial efforts are going down and even more importantly, you can preserve any grocery deals you are finding, fruit and vegetables as they're in season, 
any kind of meat deals. I talked to a mama the other day who found chicken for $1.82 a pound, and she was like, this is gold, and she got six packs. So back in the day, you know, we could get chicken for $1.49 or so a pound, but now that we are in the days where $1.82 a pound is super rare, having a home freeze dryer from Harvest Right is just another example on how you can preserve that for decades to come. All right, so now we've got all five batches of the chicken and veggie soup in the bags, all crumbled up and ready to go. It's softer than croutons, you know, whenever I'm here um, looking for my words to help describe it. Softer than croutons, softer than foam, uh, kind of feels different than you think whenever you go to grab it. So anyway, we're going to open the oxygen absorbers now and get each one in a bag and then get this sealed using our nifty impulse sealer. Like I say, life upgrades. The neat thing with this, there is uh, directions, directions on the back. Um, it can stay plugged in. It only comes on once it's pressed down and you're um, using it to seal and then it turns off. And so it stays cool which is really neat. That's what was throwing me off at first. I was like, it's not heating up, but it's not like that. It's not like my flat iron that just stays hot the whole time and I have to make sure it's not, you know, touching a wire or a Mylar bag or anything. It only comes on when you press it down. So cool. Okay, so let's get, let's get this party started. There's a little red light that comes on on the side and then it clicks off then it does the nice little seal at the top there's these little indents on both sides that come in these nice harvest right bags so later we can just rip it off um, of course if you seal too low or have any trouble uh, in general you can just use your scissors to open it but it's nice it comes with these little tabs and so there we go first bag it's a little warm to the touch but it's okay got a nice straight seal oh my what in the world i do believe i do believe we will be using this for all kinds of fun So I got some uh, refrigerator organizers at Costco and I'm gonna use some of them in here right now. Uh, I could definitely use just organizing baskets from Dollar Tree. But for now, this is what I have. So this is what we're gonna store the soup in for the moment. So that's how our storage for the time being is working out with our chicken and veggie soup from our first freeze dryer batch. And my freeze dryer is on its defrost cycle now so you can see the water coming out. And again how I have that hose up in the air just because I have it in my head. I, I don't want to, anything to happen. <laughs> you know I get moving fast where uh, we accidentally suck water back up. But I will have Travis... I'll just tell him to look in on things while I'm gone. You can see, hopefully, you can see a, a pajama mama here, but um, see the ice in there. That's defrosting. It's got an hour and 20 minutes left on its defrost cycle, and I will be gone by then, but he can check into it for me. So thank you all so much for doing all this massive food preservation with me. Over the past four days, we did a couple hundred pounds of food in those food, long-term food storage buckets that I'm gonna rotate around through as well. We also did a good first test run and a good first food storage run with this chicken and veggie soup in the Harvest Right. And yay, we did a bunch of strawberry and honey jam as well. I do hope to go over to my friend's orch orchard 
here in a few weeks and support her business and we will get a bunch of peaches. I'm planning on freeze drying peaches, canning peaches, and also do a bunch of peach jam. So hope y'all are in the mood for peaches. This is how our little shelf system is working out. But through this summer, we're going to fill it and hopefully add another shelf or two as well for our, fr for our freeze dried food storage. Don't forget to click the first link in the description below and hop on over and join me in the large family table community. Those ladies have been getting more info and a behind the scenes look at me learning my new freeze dryer. And of course, two and a half years of fun and adventures with food storage and canning and freezer meals and skillet dinners and the pressure cooker and breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, snacks. So much fun that we've had over there. So go ahead and click the first link in the description below and join us now while it is still open and again as I mentioned all the other links that I have thrown at you during this uh, mega massive food preservation video are going to be down in the description below the link to my harvest right freeze dryer setup is going to be down there also anything I've mentioned on Amazon any of my other setups as as much as I can find the links for you you should have a whole a wealth of information in the description below and I will see you real soon with another massive food preservation video and all kinds of fun. Bye bye.